Okay, and now we're back for part three of setting copy 101, and we're going to learn about a few type tricks, okay, things that we can use to really spice up what it is that we're doing, okay. Now, I haven't been talking about fonts, and I'm using the standard font in Illustrator on a Mac, which is Myriad Pro, okay, and um, Myriad Pro is Apple's default marketing typeface, great way to get you to feel like you're constantly um, engaging with Apple. They give you their typeface to use. Um, but you can sort of search through and sort of work on different type combinations. That's another video for another time, but I just wanted to just point that out because we have been using the same typeface, but I want you to see that it is a dynamic typeface and we can use it for three aspects of formatting. Okay, so let's have a little fun here and let's talk about some of the tricks that you can do inside of copy that will make it interesting. So when you're looking at just this area, it is, as I mentioned before, a desert, right? Even with great, you know, kerning and leading, it's still a lot of copy, right? It's not something that we are always dying to do and read. Okay, so we're going to do some things so that we can create little beacons of, of visual hope, okay, for this little section. So I'm going to get these guys out of the way here because we're going to do some, some surgery inside of this space. So what I'm going to do is I'm first going to copy the L in lorem, right? Or really just the first letter of the copy, all right? And I'm going to create something here called a drop cap, all right? I'm actually going to cut that, and then I'm just going to paste it. And just by pasting it, it gives me a automatic single line type of text box, okay? Now, let me tell you about drop caps. Drop caps come from medieval times, from the illuminated manuscripts. And what they were were larger, hand-painted, very ornate and decorative letters that began all of the reading that you were about to do. Okay, um, They're very interesting devices that you can use typographically, and they um, create interest. And you can use them even now in contemporary times. Now, as a um, showed you guys before I did have this orphan now I'm realizing that I can fix that the orphan can or sorry the widow mm -hmm, the widow can remain because I'm gonna do a lot to this block of copy to get it to move and shape and change um, by adding things so first we're gonna add this drop cap okay now one of the things that's very interesting is that um, you can create a sort of type sensitive area around any object in Illustrator and then you can sort of move it into the space and the copy will wrap and fit itself around it. It's really cool. So we're going to show that right now, the power of that, how that works for us. Though, if you look, this letter has a lot of space below it because it's taking into account all the leading that has been added to this particular letter. Okay. Now, I can't just sort of come in and, well, maybe I can. Let's see if I can change the letting and drop it down so that way it almost has nothing. Let's see if that's the case. No, I doubt that that's going to help us. Okay, so what I'm going to do so that I don't have a weird line drop is I'm going to go up to where it says type, create outlines, all right, and make sure that I have this letter selected. And that's going to convert the type into a vector shape. Okay, now if you notice, the difference is, is that there was a blue line down here. Now it's tightly wrapped around the L. That's exactly what I want for this text area um, or a type wrap tool rather to work efficiently. All right. So I have this shape. What I'm going to do essentially is bring it in here and then all this copy is going to wrap around in its wake. Okay. So what we're going to do is I can leave it, uh, well, move it outside. We have it selected. I'm going to go to where it says object and then text wrap and then make. Okay. And if you notice, there it is. Look, it makes a, 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 a shape around the L, right? And this shape is telling us, hey, this is the sort of safety zone that the type should not sort of be within. So what I can do now is move this into the space and look at that. The type now reacts to what it is that I have going on. Now, because my type area um, is in the shape of the L, Unfortunately, it's sort of pushing into these areas right here. So with it selected, if I go to where it says Object, Text Wrap, there are these Text Wrap options. Okay, so um, I have an offset here, but unfortunately I'm seeing that the offset is going to 
go out in all directions. So, haha, uh -huh, I have a trick. So we're going to back up and we're going to go object, text wrap, release. Okay, so now it doesn't work anymore, right? I got rid of the text wrapping. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a false shape, okay, that will have just be a vector shape that will have no color, no fill, but will act as sort of like a invisible box behind this L. So it has a nice square and controllable space for text wrapping. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the rectangle tool and I'm going to draw a box just like that around it. Okay, now I am going to remove the fill. And what I'm going to do is with this invisible shape here, I'm going to draw a box around it and the L and I created a group selection. Now what I'm going to do is go to object and then group so that these become one. Okay, just one more time. Draw the box around it. Your box is invisible, but your L is not. And we'll go command G or object group. Okay, now because these are a group, we have a visible shape, which is the L, and then an invisible shape, which is the background, just a vector box with no color in it. Okay, I use no color because I might have this type against a texture or a photo or a colored background, and it would be weird if I had some strange color. Okay, all right. So now I can go to Object, Text Wrap, Make. And there it is. It makes that box surrounding what I have. And I can move this thing into place. And haha, -ha, look at that. That is a beautiful drop cap. And I'm going to try and get it aligned with the rest of the copy. Okay, I'm doing that by eye. All right, it's off a little bit. All right, I might have to do that with uh, some surgical tools. But if you notice, right, I've got now a decent spacing here, but it's a little bit wide here, but I can still select that edge. So with the white arrow right now, if I click on the invisible box, right, just on this line, so I grab the line, I can tap it back and look at the control that you get there. You don't get that from just regular text wrap. You have to have the invisible box there in order for it to really work its magic, right? And have real control. Okay, cool. So that is now a drop cap. Let's back up and see. Ha uh ha. -huh. All right, we've made this look a little bit nicer. I see a problem here with the, with the uh, paragraph spacing that we have a sort of a weird drop there. Not the end of the world. If it's a problem, we'll hit delete of the line. And because we're in columns, it's not such a big deal now having that space. Okay, but we're going to do another thing now that's going to be really funky and it's going to sort of open up this space a little bit. And we may need to extend our box slightly, but let's see what happens when we get there. Now, we're going to create something called a pull quote. And pull quotes are really famous in like Rolling Stone magazine and really a lot of great editorial designers use it. What it is, is in an interview or an article, um, the designer will take a line from the copy that's just like the greatest line ever. It sort of sums up the article or has like the soul or the spirit of the article. And they typeset it in a box and they make it really cool and they sort of like, you know, do all these great tricks. But it's a nice way to sort of break up, right, as we said, the sea, the desert of reading, right? So we're going to do that now. And we're going to use the same technique that we used before with text wrap, but we're going to use a colored box this time just for a little bit of excitement. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the rectangle tool and we're going to do it just a little bit out of space here because my intention is that I want this box to be right here and I want the copy to wrap around it. We're going to put our pull quote right in the center. All right, so I'm just going to use the option key a little bit just to get a feel of how it's going to look. All right, I'm going to build it off to the side and then we're going to bring it back in when we're ready. So we'll use uh, smart quotes and we'll say, hmm, let's see, what can we say? Um, the best week of my life. Quote. Okay, so I use the single wrap or a single line text box. It's against what I'm uh, saying to do here, but I don't mind messing with these returns in this way. It's really not a huge deal. And, ooh, and I'm going to center this copy. Uh huh. Okay, all right. Because it's a short line and the type is big, I don't mind centering the copy, nor will the reader. 
because it's really it's just enough to be like, okay, I can deal with centering. All right, and then I'm going to italicize and go semi bold italic. All right, on this particular box. Okay, and let's let's stay punk rock here, and we're going to make this black, and we're going to make now our copy white. Okay, so I'm going to take that and I'm going to set it right on top. All right, I'm going to try and get it as aligned as I can. I'm using the arrow keys for placement here. Of course, I could use the align tool, but again, that's for another video. And I'm just going to shrink it down a little bit just because like, I like when we've sort of inversed the colors of type here when negative type, which is white type, against a, a, a black box, which is a positive background. I like to have them sort of have a nice relationship of scale, so I don't need it going right to the edge. Okay. So we don't need to give this uh, an author's name because we can sort of pretend that it's an interview. That's what happens inside of most uh, um, articles. Let's give this a little punctuation. Yeah, best week of my life. Okay, and then we're going to now draw a box around this. So we can make our famous group. And we'll do Command G, and now they are one unit. And then we're going to create a text wrap on this. And we're going to go Object, Text Wrap, Make. Yeah. Cool. All right. That warning was just sort of saying that there was going to be going around text, which is okay because I grouped the items. I'm really, I'm really expecting it to make the text wrap happen around the black box. Okay. So now watch what happens when I invade the space uh -huh, of this copy. Ooh. Okay. The copy's really shifting to sort of, you know, figure out what it's going to do with itself. Now, when I take off the box, oh, that looks horrible, okay? So I can adjust the scale of this slightly, and you can see that the type will react in a different way. So really, you got to feel it. you got to sort of find out what it is that's working and make it work, okay? Now, I do have this paragraph break. I could bring it in, which sort of gets rid of the awkwardness of the space. Or what I could do, Command-Z to get that uh, undo, I could sort of put this where in the column where the natural break is in the paragraphs and then that can sort of serve um, as a secondary function of that. Okay, and notice I'm getting this little red box on the bottom. What that means is that the copy is overflowing and therefore I'm unable to, um, there's, my, there's my widow. All right, so let's put it in the center here. This is just a fun place. And we're going to cheat and get rid of that extra line. Okay. All right, my widow still exists. Oop, that's not what I wanted to move. I'm going to move the box. All right, and in this case, I'm going to go to Object, Text Wrap, Text Wrap Options. And I'm going to increase the area. Not too much, but just enough. Yeah. All right. Took a little bit of placement, but my widow is now gone. I have a drop cap, and I now have this cool pull quote. Okay, so if you can see, these are fun ways that you can go in and really just sort of mess with the type um, to create a nice look and feel. Okay, so we've got basic formatting, right? title, subhead, and then your copy. And then we are using a drop cap, which I converted from a letter into a object and then put an invisible box here so that I could use the text wrap so that it could fit nicely into the space. And then also I broke up the two columns with a spanning element, which is now this thing called a pull quote. Okay, I literally pulled a quote, not really, but um, from an article or an interview, whatever, and put it in a unique type setting inside that uh, that block of copy. So now as I read through, it's like, cool, I can find out what the article's about, right? I'm doing what most readers do called scanning, right? So I've set up scannable items, right? Boom, scan, boom, boom, and then here. And then I dig deep, and I'll go in and read through the body copy, right? And get a sense of what it is that's that's actually going on inside of this space. Okay. So that does it, guys, for Typesetting 101. All right, we've covered a huge amount of things. 
Um, we've made some basic boring stuff look somewhat interesting. This is really the soul of great design. Now, with all this real estate staked out, I could go in, start messing with color, play with fonts, and have fun. But first, we had to do the heavy lifting and get the big stuff out of the way, and now it's done. So, come up with some great ideas, and feel free to share in the comments section on my, on my YouTube page. Thank you guys so much. Good luck.